Greetings, programs. I wanted to take a second to tell you how I created this season of Recruiter Friend using Riverside FM. Riverside is an online platform that records audio and video footage locally and uploads it to the cloud. It's been super easy for me to use. I set up a studio on the website, I send a link to my guests, and that's it. In over a decade of podcasting, finding out post-recording that the audio or video quality was bad was my biggest complaint. Not having to worry about it this season has been a huge relief. Using the affiliate link in the description below, you can check out all the other features Riverside has to offer, like their shiny new editor. Now, on with the show. Greetings, programs, and welcome to another episode of Recruit a Friend, the show where we learn about the people behind the keyboard. Today, we embark on a special journey with a guest whose spirit and resilience have transcended the boundaries of both the physical and virtual realms. I want you to meet Exodaris, a gamer with an impairment, a Twitch streamer, and a proud member of the Dungeon Dojo stream team. He doesn't just play World of Warcraft, he defines what it means to overcome challenges and find boundless joy in the game. Today, we'll delve into his journey, exploring the highs and lows, the triumphs and tribulations, and shining a spotlight on the vital topic of accessibility in gaming and content creation. Exodaris, thanks for being here. No, thank you, and hello everybody. How are you all today? Um... Wow, what a magnificent intro. I couldn't have uh, written anything about myself. That was, uh, <laughs> you're going to make me blush. Oh, thank you so much. I didn't write it either. ChatGPT is a very good friend of mine. Uh, oh, okay. I would say they're the top producer for the podcast. <laughs> Fantastic. I love that. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> uh, so I want to I wanna jump right into it, Exo. Um, and is yep, it okay so. if I call you Exo? I've seen other people. Yeah, cool. So I want to jump right into it. How did you first find your way to the world of Warcraft? Well, I I yeah. found my way into World of Warcraft, and it was a it's a little bit of a story. So I was um, your stereotypical uh, Call of Duty four console gamer uh, for many years, and my mum bought home a copy of uh, World of Warcraft and she said you know you should get into this you know be, be good to socialize and you know as your normal teenager would do you turn your nose up here and go oh, I don't want to play that man that's been nerds <laughs> and uh, well the curiosity got to me slowly over um, the summer of 2006 and there I am since. Well, <laughs> I was proven wrong. And my mum was right all along. That is a long time. You've been playing since 2006. Holy smokes. Yeah, what, I wouldn't uh, say What was your first there. character that you made? Ooh, what was my first character? Um, so my first character was a Tauren Hunter. Stereotypical Hunter. Okay. Um, I like the look <laughs> okay. of the... Big kind of Minotaur looking characters. Um, but that kind of got pushed to the side. Um, because what was really good about my journey into World of Warcraft is I had a carer that was the same age. And over that summer, we kind okay. of just we went into it together, which was kind of an experience. Um, so we went to Alliance, um, and I played a human mage, and that was my nice. first kind of leveling experience, was this uh, duo going from console gaming to fantasy World of Warcraft over the summer, and it just kind of transpired, really. Very cool. So console gaming obviously is very different. For a PC gaming, you go from using a controller to a mouse and a keyboard. Uh, what was that transition like? Um, so I've got very limited movement in my hands. Uh, so for many years, mm -hmm. I played with just a mouse, um, and I was, I was, you know, some okay. people are going to be like, "Oh, I, I, I am," and I, was, and I was that clicker. Um, but <laughs> okay. I have, okay. Over the years, uh, developed my own method of playing World of Warcraft. Um, so in my left hand, I play with an Xbox controller, um, which is okay. 
remapped as a keyboard. So it's not actually a controller. And then in my right hand, I use my mouse. So I use a kind of okay, weird so... hybrid setup. I like that. Does the does Warcraft? I know recently they added some more um, additions to allow keyboard or mouse uh, sorry, controller support in game. Uh, is that something that you're able to make use of, or do you have to use like a third party software to to remap those? Um, so I've always used a third party software called Edpadder. Okay. Um, the stuff that Blizzard have put into the game, I haven't really been able to utilize. Um, I don't think a lot okay. of it's actually been completely pushed through to the live servers yet. Um, there are okay. add-ons um, for full control support, but I have heard of cases where people aren't being banned for using third-party controllers. So there's this kind of no. this limbo as a gamer with an impairment of what you can and what you can't do with Warcraft, which is a bit worrying because there are people out there that are going yeah. to exploit, you know, accessibility options. But there are people um, like myself and that that do need these tools and add-ons to be able to enjoy the game. Right. Yeah, that's that's wild. I, it's it's unfortunate. There's bad actors that would that would take advantage of of things that accessibility features allow us to do. Um, Be because of means of potentially that we just don't have access to them. A yeah. lot of games. Yeah, that's that, crazy. Uh, uh, so you started off. You, you. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a lot of games um, that unfortunately have a lot of accessibility controls that how that do get exploited. Um, a couple I can think of is um, Call of Duty on PC with their controls and support. Mm -hmm. And that actually, if you play with a controller, it has like a, an assist, an aim assist. And there are some other games as well. Okay. Uh, there's a recent one that came out, um, Forza Motorsport, which is brilliant, brilliant for accessibility. Uh, but effectively, it makes you be able to drive the car around the track uh, without pushing any buttons. So people have oh. uh, took that and uh, they've been doing the old elastic bound trick and uh, leaving their car go around the track for overnight and uh, reaping the rewards. Oh. Yeah, well, sneaky. That's, that's greasy. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you do you find the trend in gaming is leaning more towards uh, making sure that games are accessible or for, 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 for all gamers, different types of gamers? Or do you find that the that it's still too slow, the movement of the, the industry? It's it's getting better and there are there are developers that are better than others. I must say there is a um mm -hmm. if I had a hat on that I could virtually kind of flick off, I'd tip it off to Blizzard. <laughs> um because they are doing a very good okay. job of their accessibility options at the moment. Um the main thing in gaming at the moment that I struggle with and I don't understand why games don't do it is the ability to turn off either keyboard or controller support just so you can map whatever you want a lot of games have their own built in control yeah. schemes that you can't overwrite and change so if you can't reach a button on your controller that's, that's tough luck unfortunately which it's an easy fix. Like it's a very simple thing, and that would be right. my my biggest thing that I would go out there and scream at game developers the best they can to tell them to do. Yeah, it seems uh, it seems like an easy fix, right? Just give you that toggle that lets you select between keyboard or mouse. Um, yeah, it's weird that good. they would choose that. Uh, yeah, but there's no one size fits all answer. For, uh, no, unfortunately, for controller. No. For... yeah, that's uh, that's too bad. That is too bad. Um, so you, you started Warcraft, uh, and you started off as a mage. When did you know I'm going to be playing this game for the rest of my life? 
<laughs> wow. 2006 was a long time ago, sir. So 2006, okay. So the only real time that I took off from World of Warcraft was when I was uh, started, uh, doing a lot of exams. And these were like, I'm not sure what it's like where you are from in the world, but um, in the UK, what we do is we have our final school exams, and then you can go on to like two years of harder exams at college. So that kind of time period was my, I needed to knuckle down and study because this, this, that's it. Once you've done that, you can go on, on your way to the world, wherever you want to go. Um, but after I, after I did my studies, when I said about 18, I I got the itch. I got the itch to come back to World of Warcraft. (laughs) This was around Cataclysm now, from what I can remember. And I, I had that itch. I was... I was like, I really want to get back into this. Okay. Um, I think that was probably that point where I was gone. I I was sucked. I was sucked in, and that was it for me. And it- I have been ever since. You know, we've been through the tribulations of <laughs> Shadowlands. We got through it, and I'm still here. Yeah. So yeah, it's Shadowlands good. was a, was a challenge for a lot of us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? So everybody is sort of engages with the game in different ways. There's collectors, there's uh, pet battlers, raiders, M plusers, PVPers. Where do you sort of fall on that spectrum of of how you engage with the content the most? I am, I I am a, a paint splatter of a WoW player. I'm I I kind of spread myself everywhere now. Probably my my biggest love is mounts. I love mount collecting, but I will only collect the mounts that I actually want, if that's a thing. I'm not one of these people that will push, push, push to get every mount in the game. It's a bonus if I get an extra mount, and it's like, whoopee, yay. That was was one step done. But (laughs) I do like guessing the mounts that I want. Um, Transmog as well. I do like a good transmog. Um, raiding. raiding like a favorite a... mount story. What would you say is your favorite? My favorite. What would you say is your favorite mount story? that you've, you've collected? Ah, uh, that probably finally get an invincible in two thousand and fifteen. Oh, nice. Um, nice. So that's a long time. Uh, Were you farming him every week from? Yes. Yeah. So after the mage, as soon as Wrath came in, I I was one of those people, you know, that fully took on the Death Knight mantle, and that was it. And that's right. where the name Exodorus came from. That was the name of my um, okay. Draenei Death Knight, because I wasn't invented with names, so I just put an S on the end of Exodorus. Not very inventive. I never, I never know that. <laughs> yeah, not very inventive. But I, I was just like, ah, yeah, that'll do. That'll do as a name. Um, that still is the name of my uh, definitely now, but is actually a Torin. So it doesn't quite fit, but the name's carried on. <laughs> but yeah, get invincible it. after living the death I dream for those. That many years was that was the favorite yeah. mount story I reckon. Nice, nice. It, it's a big moment. You don't have to watch that RP every week anymore on the uh, on the Arthas fight. That's a relief on its own. Oh, I know. <laughs> it feels so long though. I mean, we're talking nine years now. Nine years that feels like yeah. an eternity. <laughs> Yeah. So you mentioned you were mentioning raiding there as well before I, I jumped on top of you with the with the mount uh, the mount question. You so you raid uh, also? Yeah, I do raid. Um, I have raided. I want to say up to a mid mythic level. So that's not bad. Not bad, you know. If I could 
hold my little hand up. Yeah. I would. I think that's pretty good for someone with uh, the difficulties that I suffer. And it's, uh, you know, it's always fun out DPSing uh, some people that obviously have full range of movement. It's uh, quite satisfying right. to tell them that they just got uh, defeated by a, a little guy with backwards hands on a mouse and then I suppose controller. Um, but yeah, I created my think... own input solution and uh, and I've beaten you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, mid mythic. Um, but I've taken a wheel back, so to speak, uh, now, and I'm okay. doing a bit more just casual curve to play Money. other characters and just relax because you just don't need to go into mythic now. Um, the girls I'm in yeah. now, complex unity. Um, we we are just a group of friends that enjoy playing the game, and we just thought we all do mythics. We all do like twenties or above. You don't need to go into mythic necessarily. I mean, you would go in there for what six item level on trinkets. A couple of trinkets. That's it. Yeah, that's basically. it. Like it's. Yeah, it's not worth the stress we found and the headache of just repeatedly wiping on a boss. Plus, we're just doing yeah. Care. The difficulty level ramps up quite a bit. Yeah, we found that um, with curve as well, we've got a lot more flexibility with numbers because obviously with mythic you need that set twenty, yeah. and if you're missing someone over yeah. a week because of sickness. You're kind of stuck. So, uh, yeah, we've kind of... We're chilling. We're doing Mythic Plus, doing Mount Runs. You know, we're enjoying the game for what it's worth, and I think the general morale within our team has been a lot more better and a lot more humble um, than we what we were getting quite stressed in, like, Shadowlands and stuff. So this has definitely been for the best. I don't, I don't mind. I don't mind raining once a week. It gives me the rest of the week to, you know, farm mob, farm mounts, and all that. So yep. that's fun. Um, yep. Play some other games. And Transmog the is a is, real end game anyway. Yeah. The good thing is about my guild is we're not just <laughs> a World of Warcraft guild. We are like a group of friends and gamers, and we just kind of sit on Discord daily play over games and but it's all stemmed from World of Warcraft which I think's a beautiful thing because that's what's brought us all together as a friendship group um, but we still do other stuff together the good thing is we've <laughs> had we've had a marriage in our guild we've had oh, nice. general meetups and it's just it's just nice the fact that a group of gamers that have come from World of Warcraft are able to be friends outside of World of Warcraft and bond and do other stuff, which is nice. Yeah, you love to hear that stuff. Spe speaking of not just World of Warcraft, you don't just play World of Warcraft. You're also a, a Twitch streamer and uh, an event caster. How does that journey yes. start? How did you, uh, at what point did you wake up one morning and be like, you know what, I'm going to go go dominate Twitch now? <laughs> Oh, so my Twitch story, my Twitch story is a uh, is an interesting one. So, me and a group of friends we started up some YouTube channels together. Um, we started doing videos, and they were good videos. They were good videos. But what I was finding on my end was the content that I was trying to record. Oh, it was it was bad. It was so bad. It was it was horrendous. I am no editor by any means. And, uh... Okay. I just kind of steered away from the editing. And a friend of mine told me about a website called Justin TV, which obviously was the pre-Twitch era. Yeah. Um, and I started watching a, a gentleman called Solar Poppin. And honestly, I found him at Arius. 
I was, I was staying up till like four o'clock in the morning in the UK, yeah, just to watch, uh, obviously, the stream in America, just get up to the shenanigans and stuff. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> this, this, this is fun. So that happened, and then a guild I was in then called Without Doubt, um, I was raiding with them, and a couple of their players were like, so, how do you play? And they kept asking, I was like, I was trying to think of a way that I could show them. So I was like, oh, I don't know what I could do, why don't I, why don't I just do a stream for them? So they can right. kind of watch me as a guild, uh, just play and just see what happens. And I did, and I've been streaming ever since, so... Yeah, that's been that really. Um, never been a huge, huge streamer, but that's never what my mm -hmm. goal has been. I just like streaming because of the social side now, and I think that starting that day on Twitch really got my brain into the whole social aspect of that. I can I can meet some cool people out there in the internet space. So yeah, that's that's basically how I right, started okay. on Twitch was it was just a bit of an icebreaker situation because if you're someone with a disability you tend to find people are a bit nervous asking you questions. They're mm -hmm. a bit like, Ooh, I don't wanna offend this person, but how do I ask? Whereas streaming's been right. a good way of having people come and ask me questions, like random strangers, like people that I don't know, like, like, how are you playing with a controller? And then I obviously go into more detail, and sometimes there's, like, more questions about my disability, like, how long have you been in a wheelchair or whatever? And I, I don't mind answering questions, but... For the general public who are looking in on me, Twitch has been a great way of just removing that barrier, which I think is fantastic. Right. Because people are always cautious, but it's been really good and I love it. I absolutely love streaming. It's fantastic. Nice. What's the what are the accessibility options like at, for a streamer? Um, like what what's your stack stack look like? Are you using OBS? Uh, going through Twitch? Is it uh, is it easy? Um, is it easier to stream than it is to play? I guess is my question. That's a weird question. Um, it's about the same. I've completely self taught myself all of the stuff with OBS and all that. Um, okay. But yeah, I just fire it up. Just, just play well, whatever games. It uh, doesn't really make a difference, really, but it's just it's just really good. Um, and there are some funny okay. moments. Okay. Not just World of Warcraft, but especially if you uh, you beat someone at FIFA is a good one. Uh, the football game. Uh, that, that's quite ironic to uh, say things down the microphone that they just got beaten by a guy who can't even kick a ball in real life. <laughs> so, it has its moments. It has its good. Video, video games are the great equalizer. <laughs> yeah, I know I have a good sense of um, humor. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important. I think everybody should have a better sense of humor uh, today. It's... If we can't laugh, what can we do, right? It's uh, there's yeah. a, a lot of yeah. reasons not to, so we should look for reasons to laugh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you recently joined the Dungeon Dojo stream team. How did you find the dojo community, and what brought you to to the uh, to the point when you were joining their team? So the Dungeon Dojo, as I'm fashionably wearing, you know, their beautiful match, you know, not a plug, honestly, I didn't. Didn't wear this on purpose. Uh, 
I found Wilchie them Fortune through... forces everyone on the team to, to wear the t-shirts. Yeah, I found <laughs> them through Wochi, Wochi TV. Um, kind of, I'm always been a bit of a, a bit of an odd, an odd lad. I like to explore the male section of Twitch. I kept seeing this name, Dungeon Dojo, pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up. I was like, this is a, do you know what, they have some cool streamers. I have some cool streamers. I was like, I could, I think I could, I could kind of gel with this, these group of people. And so I approached Wochi, which we for a bit, I spent some time in the Discord chatting, and then he offered me a position that was over the moon. So that's been great. Um, I just, I just love Dungeon Dojo. I've never felt more at home than I have in, a, like, a gaming community. And I have that because okay. they're so accepting of everyone. And I love that. Like, it doesn't matter. Do you, Everyone is a gamer and everyone can play what they want. And I love that. I just love that. There's no barriers. Everyone just helps each other. Or everyone just joins in, maps mm-hmm. in, does activities, does raids, events. And yeah, I just, I really got on with it. And I was very impressed with Bochi and obviously Purple Pixels, the way they've organised the whole structure and community. And because of them, I was also available to apply for Blizzard WoW Partner status, which I got in, which I was very proud of. Oh, nice. So thanks to Dungeon Dojo for that. So that was a that was a real highlight of probably my so-called WoW career, um, being affiliated and actually being able to, you know, give away stuff for the, the game that I love was wonderful. Yeah, I just it makes me. That's great. It's good news. The WoW Partner Program is a, is a great uh, a great program. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. Nice. Uh, Twitch streaming, WoW playing, EXO. What does the future hold for you? What does the future hold for? Well, I dipped my wheels into casting for the first time mm-hmm. in 2023. First of all, in the Dungeon Dojo Invitational, which was like a Mythic Plus push event. Uh, that was a... Uh, that, was, that was a nervous experience. Um, yeah, the, the event was well organised. Uh, uh, I believe from what my memory can remember, I think somebody went sick on the opening day. Of the event. So, let yeah. along me, I had to open the event with no experience, uh, very little prep, and only my <laughs> my own brain's production quality on setting up green screens and like hey. fancy alerts and stuff. Uh, that was that was taxing, but I tell you what, it was worth it because. The feedback I got from opening was phenomenal. And yeah, you could tell I was nervous in the vault. You could tell I was nervous. I had no experience. I was opening the event <laughs> and I was a bit shell shocked. But every every single person that came and watched and joined in and chatted, there was not one negative comment. And I think that is pure and it's just Oh nice. Lovely. There was not one single. No, everything was positive, and that's that's just a lovely atmosphere to be in, and that kind of reassured me, and uplifted me, and gave me, you know, that push for the rest of the event and for the Emma cast that we did during the DDI, uh, which then transpired. I then got asked to cast or. The race to World Fest, which was fantastic, which is more my kind of speciality. 
because I'm more of a raider than a Mythic Pluser, I would say. I do do Mythic Plus, but I, right. I do it because I have to. I don't do it because I necessarily enjoy it as much. <laughs> so the right. raiding thing was was really, really good, and I absolutely loved it. Um, there were a couple of key moments during the race to World First casting that I did that really actually made me a little bit emotional was casting for the guild Undaunted. Mm -hmm. uh, Undaunted are a group of gamers with hard of hearing, hearing loss, or deafness um, that completely raid with no comms apart from typing and the ping system and that many weak horrors and that that touched me so much watching them play and their passion was fantastic and now I'm actually yeah they're a great bunch that because of that event I am now helping them with some graphic design and stuff because I reached out to them and I said look let me help in any possible way. Just give me something. I will do anything to help out. Because they that girl <laughs> resonated with me so much. And I was like, look, I will, I will help. This, this is fantastic. And anything that I can help with that you don't need to get done outsourced, just ask me and I'll do my best and we'll do stuff. So that's been great. So I've been helping out with their stuff, doing stuff on the European Guild and getting involved with their community, which was great because although I have a different impairment, I feel like it is. also being in that same kind of bracket, I can possibly, I, I would love if, if my, somewhere in my very small brain, if there's something that I can help one of their players out with, with regards to accessibility, that would make my day. So, mm -hmm. that's been really good. So, hats off to Dungeon Dojo. It's awesome. They've really pinged me off in many directions and really helped me Sounds like they grow. opened a bunch of doors for you, too. It did. It, it did. And I can't thank Wedge in Purple enough because... I wouldn't be sitting here without them, really. Hey. And I wouldn't have the confidence. I love it. They've really brought me out my shell, I feel. Yeah, they do really... They, they, the dojo excels at building people up, I think. Um, it's one of their their best qualities, is that they, they have that, that ability to, to lift us. A rising tide lifts all ships. Yes. Yeah. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I have to tell you about this season's sponsor. Ever Ember Creative is a studio and agency dedicated to making life easier for streamers. They've helped me shape Recruit a Friend through brand design, video editing, and social media management. But they do so much more than that. Literally anything you need. If you're looking for a team capable of diving deep to help you achieve your goals, however big or small, call them. Also, they're fairly tolerable human beings. Ever Ember Creative. Content ignited. Uh, Exo, we end every episode with a 10-question recruiter friend questionnaire. If you are ready, sir, I would like to ask you those questions. Absolutely. Sure. Question number one. What is your favorite word? Luminescence. Oh, I like that. Yes, it rolls like off the very tongue. Pretty word. Very nice. Yeah. I've been thinking yeah. about this. I've been listening to Question your previous podcasts. <laughs> Trying to figure the good ones. <laughs> Question number two. What is your least favorite word? Sandwich. I don't sandwich, like the word. really? <laughs> I don't like the word sandwich. So I really no. don't like it, honestly. It makes my teeth grind just thinking Why? about it. I don't know. I think it's because it, it must be a UK thing. When you go to when you go okay. to the beach as a kid and you have sandwiches, you literally always get sand in your sandwiches. 
and I could feel it. I didn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not okay. nice. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> Question at number three: What is what sound or noise do you love? I am a bit of a petrol head, and mm. I love my old nineties Japanese cars and all their stutitus okay. and their pops and bangs. Uh, for those people around my stream, you'll know that I, if I'm not playing well, I'm kind of doing something car related. So, okay, I'll do that. I like that. Cool. Question number four: What sound or noise do you hate? Now, if any of my friends are listening to this, they're gonna know this straight away. I really hate it when people eat down the microphone. You know who you are. You know who you are if you're listening. Okay? Mute your mic when he eats. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you're being called out, whoever you are, mystery eater. Yes. <laughs> Question number five. What is your favorite dungeon? My favorite dungeon is Tazamash. Oh, Beautiful dungeon. Lovely dungeon. Yes, because it's got a dragon with a pirate hat. Fantastic. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I love the mm -hmm. the boss that you fight with the instruments. I think that's great. The little band boss. Yeah, that's a fun fight too. Yeah. Yeah. Question number six. What is your least favorite dungeon? Shrine of the Storm. Oh, you don't like snapping mobs into teacups? Yeah. No. I do not at all. I just don't like anything come out of that dungeon. Question number seven. That's a very popular answer, by the way. Question number seven. What is your favorite curse word? Oh, God, I don't think I fucking say it. I'm not sure if I can say this. Oh, you can. But I might have to bleep this out. This is a very British word. I'm sure you've had a couple of Brits on. Uh, it would be... Um, yep. Cunt. Yep. Okay. We've also had some Australians on. It's their favorite word as well. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> Question number eight. What is your favorite raid? Uh, Battle for Tazar and Mm, that's a very thematically fun raid. There's some good bosses in there. You've got King Raskatan. You've got... It's not mm -hmm. a very good boss, but it's a cool boss. Mecha Talk. Obviously, you've got Jay mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my personal favorite was Opulence, the way you split into two. I love that fight. Yeah, it's a fun one, too. Yeah. Excellent choice. Question number nine. What is your least favorite raid? This might be unpopular for some people. My least favorite raid is the Bastion of Twilight. Oh. Why? Um, I think just generally I was looking through the raid journal before and I was thinking there's only one boss in there that will show a girl and the rest of them are a bit meh. The whole aesthetic is okay, not very okay. nice. A trans one is not very nice. And it was a first raid, and let's be honest, first raids aren't usually, apart from customer for the best. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The question number 10. If Azeroth was real, where would you call home? I think you're going to enjoy this answer. We go back to the beginning of the show, and we're going to say Mulligal. Okay. Back to that little tour. Oh, and really? Back to that original starting yeah. area of me on my tour and hunter, Mulligal, yep. on the plains, with the cows and the kodos. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I'm I'm reminded of the original WoW intro cinematic where the the tauren holds up like the grass and lets it go in the in the yeah. in the wind. Most peaceful so, race in Azeroth. I imagine the that's, that's yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a great answer. I love it. Exo, thank you so much for being here. Can you tell our friends where they can find you? Yes, um, you can find me um, on Twitch uh, and every other social media platform under the tag The Answer Diaries. Um, I have that on <laughs> all platforms, so if you want to come and say hi, come say hi. It's been a pleasure, and I've really enjoyed excellent, being here excellent. today. I'm glad. I'm glad we had a lot of fun as well. Friends, if you want, you can follow us on Twitter. We are at RAF underscore podcast. You can subscribe everywhere you find podcasts. And if you're inclined, you can drop us a review. They do help the show get discovered. Remember, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. We'll see you next week.